Hi, in this video we're going to do some programming with the famous Pascal's Triangle. So here's the agenda. Why does this even matter? Why do you care about Pascal's Triangle? And then secondly, how would you program that using the C-sharp language? My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. And so you're watching one of the videos from my courses that I teach to real students who become real professionals. So please look along and subscribe if you're interested in becoming a software developer. Now the problem that we're looking at today is really something that is old. This is a math problem and it has been observed from ancient times. So Pascal, a French mathematician, gets credit for the name obviously. So here's what a diagram looks like and what we're going to create. Pascal's triangle is simply a buildup from the top row here of one and then the second row down gives us another row with the uh, sum of the previous row. Let me scroll down in the Wikipedia article and show you a little bit more graphical example of how this works. So look over on the right here and you can see that the row above is being used to compute the, ne the next row down. And so that's really what our math problem is and what we're going to solve with our computer. Now other than being an interesting trivial observation, we can use this in some of our math problems. So if you've taken any algebra, you've known that some of the polynomials that you've worked with, such as computing x plus y squared, gives you the coefficients of this uh, triangle. So you can see that x here, x squared, has a 1 for a coefficient. The next one's a 2, and it goes back to 1. Now if you get to be in larger problems, such as this one here, you can start to see that there's a general format of how this works. So let's take a look over at this uh, polynomial factoring calculator at Wolfram Alpha. If you haven't used this in your math class, you should probably buy the app if you're into any kind of uh, Algebra 2 or beyond. This is going to be a valuable uh, asset to you. So I'm going to paste in a polynomial. So I want to do x plus y to the power of 5 and let's see what comes out here. So let's scroll down and take a look here. So you can see that we have the the row here x to the fifth, 5, x to the fourth, 10x to the third, 10x squared, 5, and then 1. So you see that pattern? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's exactly one of the rows from Pascal's triangle. So let's take a look at the top here and go back to where we began and you can see here we have this row here it's 1 5 10 10 5 1 and so this here appears in mathematical equations it's also used in probability statistics and things like that for example when you have a polynomial distribution you have the the normal curve and it shows up in things as common as game shows where you drop a ball from the top and the probabilities of hitting the center are obviously much higher than the probabilities of hitting on the outside and how much probability directly relates to Pascal's triangle. So you can see in the Wikipedia article that there are things as old as 755 AD from India and then down here from China which is approximately a thousand years old as well. And so these observations have been around for a long time. And if you're interested you can go down to the Wikipedia article and find all kinds of applications of why this is used. It becomes artistic, it becomes statistical, mathematical, probabilities it's got a lot of applications. So for our interest, at least for the point of this video, is to learn programming. And so we're going to use some arrays and learn how to manipulate them applying this math problem. So here's what our program is going to do. I'm going to ask a person how tall your triangle should be. And so I'll put in a number such as six. And then it's going to print out the Pascal's triangle for six rows. I'm going to try something larger such as 20. And then you can see that the Pascal triangle gets quite large and it doesn't fit on the screen. So I need to expand my terminal and get something a little bit better. And so that's what we're going to build here. So I'm going to start up a new C Sharp project using Visual Studio and put some comments in to say what we're about ready to do. We're going to build a Pascal's triangle. The first thing I'm going to do is put in a while loop that never ends, so while true. And so the user can just keep playing with a triangle until they click the close box. First of all, we're going to print off the question to say, how tall do you want the triangle to be? And then we're going to get an integer from the console. So remember, we have to do int parse if we want to get this. If, the, if they type in something besides an integer, we'll get an exception. The program will stop. Now we're going to declare an array. Actually, we're going to declare a jagged array or an array of arrays. 
And so we're going to call it triangle arrays. And you notice we're using the double square brackets, which means this is a, this is a list of lists or an array of arrays. We want to make exactly one more uh, in the uh, list than what the user asked for as far as the height goes. Next, we're going to start a section here where we create a new list of arrays. So we're going to have each new array being one larger than the one before. And so we're going to have a for loop that says go from row to zero to the triangle height. So that's what the user asked for or entered was the triangle height. Now for each new array that we create, we're going to say it is equal to the row number plus one as far as its length. So the first row is row zero, it will have exactly one element. The next row down is row number one, which is the second row, and it has two pieces in it. And so that's why we're coming up with this formula that says, give it the row plus one as its length. So there's no value stored in the rows yet. We're just creating arrays that will be able to hold integers. So now in the next part down, we're going to say, we're going to calculate those int values that each node of the triangle will hold. And so now we're going to fill the arrays with numbers. So the first item on the list is going to be triangle arrays, array zero, position zero. So we're only one item here. And the first value that we're going to start with is one. Now you notice I have an error. So this is a good example of where I type things wrong. So you can see the underline on triangle arrays says this doesn't exist. And the reason why it doesn't exist is because it's outside of the while loop. So the while loop ends up here and I declared triangle uh, values somewhere right up in the, in the middle of that. So let's, uh, let's take this code or take this better. Maybe we'll just delete the uh, bracket here and move it to the end. And now it's inside where it belongs. All right, now it's time for a double for loop. So we're going to go through each row and then go through each column in that row. So a row member is one of the levels of the triangle and a column is one of the numbers in the triangle. So we're going to go from zero to the triangle height minus one. Then the second one is we're going to go from zero to the number of elements that are in that row. So if there is only uh, three elements in the row, it's gonna be from zero to column is less than three. Now let me give you an example of what we're trying to compute. So it's visually uh, in your head before you start to write the code. So we want to compute the values for the row minus one array. So remember we have this row counter going on. So what are the values? So the values are going to be where you combine the numbers from the previous row. So you, for instance, in the first example, you combine number one and two here, and those add together to get three. And the next row down, you combine one and three together, and you get four. Let's pick another example. We have six and four above here, and then they combine to get 10. And so the, the numbers get larger as you go down and the triangle gets one row larger for every row we add. So now here is the actual adding that we're going to do. So we're going to go to this, uh, this element here called triangle, uh, triangle arrays at row plus one and take the column value. We're going to add something to that. What are we going to do? We're going to take the current row counter and the column value and add it on. Also, we're going to go to the next item over, which is row plus one, column plus one. And we're going to add something to that. So I'm going to copy and paste to save some typing. But we're going to just take the row column value here and add it to the other. So we're doing what you see here in the comments. We're taking the next row down and computing it. So the first version of our uh, printing is going to occur now. So we want to print the triangle showing all of its values. So we're going to use a double nested for loop again. So we're going to go from row to the number of the uh, items and the height of the triangle. The second one is to go through the column for each of these. And we're simply going to print the value whatever is found at row and column. So kind of a coordinate. And then I'll add a space so that they're separated. And then for each new row, we're going to print a console write line. So it starts a new row. Now this isn't going to be symmetrical, but it will show the values of our triangle. So let's run it and see what it looks like. Okay, it looks like the application ran without any syntax errors. So if you got to this part, congratulations. Let's see what happens now when I type a five 
and it's going to print off the uh, the triangle. Let's try a little bit bigger. Let's try 9. You can see it's coming out better. Let's try something big like 20. And you can see that the triangle is printing, but it's, it's not as visually appealing as we'd like it to be. So we have to compute how to add some spaces between each item so that way it fills out like a triangle. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that every item that is printed is the same width. So when we're doing this printing right here, some numbers print only one space, some take two, some take more. So we can tell it to use the exact number of spaces every time. So let's erase this extra space that we added on and instead use a formatting. So the formatting that I'm going to do is going to use curly brackets. So I'm going to say at position zero or number zero in this item, I want to use six spaces. So this is the format to say uh, whatever whatever first parameter comes in takes six spaces. Now I got to put that in quotations and it should print six spaces for each number. Let's see if that looks any better. All right, looks like we're working here. So I'm going to type a uh, seven for the levels and you can see now that every item is taking six spaces like I expected it to. Let's try a little bit bigger and there you got it. So not bad, it's coming out in straight columns. Now I'd like it to be more, what do you call it, an isosceles triangle where you have a, a balance, like a pyramid shape. So let's add some numbers or some spaces at the beginning of each row so that way it will be balanced. So you think about how many spaces you need. Well, let's see. If you did a math formula, you would say we have six um, spaces per character or each, each value. And I want to center it. So we want to have half of that on the left side as new spaces. So right here is the place where I want to compute this. So I want to add half the spaces before each new row. Now, I don't want to insult your intelligence. I'm sure you could figure that out, but I'm just going to give you a formula to make this go quickly. So what we're going to do is create a new write statement, and it's going to create a new string. So the string is going to look like this. It's going to take a space character and repeat it. So the repeat part is um, the math formula. So here's, here's what I found out. Through lots of trial and error, you can say that we take the triangle height minus the row number and multiply it by three. So why three? Well, three is half the width of our uh, each number. So if I were to change the width of this guy here to be an even number like eight, then I would swap this one out to be four. So if you want your triangle to get wider for taller numbers, that's how you would do it. So let's go back to three and six for our two values. Now let's see if that works like I promised. It's supposed to be a symmetrical pyramid. Okay, so here goes the problem. It says, how do you want it to be? Let's go with eight tall. And sure enough, it looks to me like it's working. So let's go with 10 and let's go with bigger, 14. Let's try 20. And you're gonna see eventually when we get to uh, numbers like this, it doesn't fit on the screen anymore. So we can fix that. We can go down to the properties here. If I click on the upper left corner and then change the font size. So let's go down to about 16 and now it fits on the screen better. So I can expand the terminal to be much, much wider. Let's see, something's not quite right on one of those rows, but uh, pretty close. Let's just try another. So this time when I run 25, it looks to me like it's fitting. So the numbers are getting large and uh, I might want to add another space in there after all. So you could experiment with different colors. That would be kind of cool. If you had odd numbers and even numbers and different font colors, um, you could put commas in. So this is just kind of the starting point. If you would like to see some more information about arrays and jagged arrays, I have a tutorial that would give you some more background information. If you'd like to learn how to program using some games and using C Sharp, then I have a playlist here called Beginning C Sharp, which will take you from the beginning and eventually take you through the other courses, which will make you into a software developer. So thanks for watching and please subscribe.